Shun. I'm here with you today looking at something that is extremely fascinating. It is also multifaceted to get in those F words. When I look around, I'm looking at robot tending, putting parts into machines, putting tool holders into machines, mm -hmm. and even taking cutting tools in and out of tool holders. Would we like to go into detail for the audience watching right now? Sure. With everything that's going on behind us? Yeah. Um, so it is a lot um, going on back here. So we currently have um, three of these uh, WHAMRs. Um, those are work, handling, um, autonomous mobile robots. So they're, um, one of them is, um, as you just mentioned, serving uh, two machines, the actual work pieces, um, putting them onto those pallets, um, and then also um, putting those work pieces uh, into our mo uh, turn mill machines, NTX 1000. Um, not only um, this um, WHAMR um, loads and unloads uh, work pieces, it also changes out the uh, chuck jaws on this NTX 1000. Shun, as I look at this situation, and I know the audience is watching, we have some real experts out there, mm -hmm. but we have people who are learning at a very young age as well and get into this technology. So I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions that some might consider silly, and some might okay. consider I needed to know. These carts, I'm gonna call them carts to keep it simple, full of parts, moving around, do they bump into each other, and how do they communicate to make sure that what's going on inside of this fenced-in area doesn't become chaos? Yeah, so, um, each of these a, um, WHAMRs, um, they know uh, where each other's are. So, um, and then also there are sensors um, on these units. So um, they're, they're not going to be, be bumping into um, to each other. And then also these are collaborative robots, um, which means um, humans um, can also uh, work on, um, in the same environment. So um, it, I mean, it's a base, uh, very safe uh, environment even uh, working around this area. And for this interview, we even considered hopping in here to kind of prove that point, which sure. we could do because it is safe. Now, I want to get into, when I see a cell like this, maybe there's some folks out there that see it and go, well, that's a bit daunting. It seems like a lot to take on. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot to set up. But in reality, it's not overly complicated, is it? Once no. you've made the investment in the technology, it's kind of easy to learn and move forward with it, you know, as the shop continues to grow, isn't it? Yeah, so um, these collaborative robots, well, um, conventionally, um, robots, you need to be programmed. And those were uh, pretty difficult to do. Um, you need to understand the robot, you need to be able to program them. Uh, but these collaborative robots, they are much, uh, much easier to program and um, user-friendly. So um, that kind of, uh, what do you call, wall, or um, those are not here anymore. As I look around as well, something that pops into my head is we're around the world, a lot of us have a labor shortage. You know, we haven't really done the best job in the last couple of decades advertising what we're doing. And with you living in the U.S., you know what it's like there in the U.S. And there's sure. a lot of places around the world. So when I see this setup, I go, man, how much is it able to do? Which then brings me back to the part of the conversation that we always convey to the audience about automation is not taking jobs. Mm -hmm. It's removing the mundane, it's removing the dangerous, it's removing the dirty. So let's look at it that way by implementing it in that way because tag on, man, we're missing a lot of people that we need in this industry. And the cobots and robots are helping us take care of being productive and make money for each of these companies as we make these investments, right? Absolutely. Um, no, um, not only that, uh, it makes the customer much more sustainable for long term. Um, if you try to hire somebody, get them to work on the machine, get them to learn um, how to run the machine, a few years later they can be, be moving on to a different company. Uh, but if you have these types of robots, they're not going to move on to a different company. They're going to be sustainably working uh, at your facility and continuing to do what it wants you to do, make sure. money. That's why I bring experts like you on camera because sustainability is so very important. Thank yes. you for saying that part, that's amazing. So just to reiterate one more time, we are quite literally taking cutting tools out of holders. Yes, that was the, um, that's the other WHA. The other side over there. Yes. We're taking holders and putting it in the machine, mm -hmm. but we can also take them out of the machine as necessary. We can also take cutting tools in and out of the holders, and we're loading parts, unloading parts. It is really a fully interactive cell 
from beginning to end to allow someone to be efficient, effective, and productive. Correct. Correct. I just had to reiterate that part because I felt like at the beginning, although we didn't mention it, we skipped a little bit over it because we got so excited about the cobots and robots and carts moving around. I get excited a lot, Shun. I do appreciate you being here conveying this to the audience. This is amazing technology from DMG Mori. For my friends out there, this is my buddy Shun. Really, really a good dude. Thank you so much for your time, Thank my you friend. Thank you for coming.